Well, like my mom said, I am Sophia Chua. I am a senior at Immaculate Conception Academy, and I am very honored. Well, as you said, forced, but I'm I'm still quite honored to be invited to be your speaker today. So um, I will be discussing with you the basics of photography and and videography, and this is more of um, things that I've learned over the years and that I hope that I can impart on you so that you can reach a creative genius like you could never before. So I will be discussing uh, four topics. Um, I'll be discussing the basic shooting guide. I'll be discussing uh, the planning, uh, shots and angles, and a whole uh, breakdown of how uh, it works. Okay. So uh, just in the words of uh, Destin Sparks, photography is the story I failed to put into words. So our intention of everything we do is to try to inform and show the, the audience what we want to, to portray. So in starting, um, for the basic shooting guide, there are three rules that we essentially have to follow. So the first rule is the rule of thirds. Now, if you can see here, um, the rule of thirds is essentially a three by three grid to facilitate symmetry and balance. If you can see on the right side, you can see that there is a grid where um, the points where they intersect are actually are, are called, I like to call them um, like, like interest points because that's where normally the, the audience tends to look at. So here you can see that the way that the entire frame was composed was the topics, ergo the pool and the and the multi the, the multi-purpose building is, is placed on the um, the locations of these points. So this also helps the symmetry and balance. So it's very important to also follow rule of thirds. So ev everywhere you look, you should always try to imagine this three by three grid. So next is the the leading line. So these these give give the viewer a sense of where to look. So they are essentially imaginary lines that can help direct the eyes of the person to your subject. So if you can see here on the, on the left photo, you can see that there is a river that leads into these, these buildings. This is actually a photo from um, Shanghai's Pearl Tower, I believe. And this, uh, the intention of this photo was to create a sort of, um, a sort of like image to where it can show the vast landscape of the city and also highlight certain aspects like this building. And you can also are see these here. Your act I'm sorry, Sophie, are, are these your actual photos? And yes, what everything device is here are actual photos. What device sorry? did you use? What device? Is it a phone or a DSLR ah. to create this kind of effect? This is actually all, all, of, all of the photos you, you're, you're seeing right now are all taken just from my phone. So like this this also proves that with the right uh guide the composition and lines you can also like prove uh you can also shoot photos that look like they will be taken from a actual camera of course nothing will be a a dslr but of course we're not gonna carry a whole camera everywhere we go so what's the next best thing a phone and a phone can also show uh show things like these yes uh did that thank answer you. your question yes thank you <laughs> Okay, so uh, so continuing on, um, you can actually use um, like natural formations and uh, like like city grids. You don't always have to uh, you don't always have to rely on actual lines. So th uh, like these two, these can give a sense of direction of where to look. So for example, on the right one, your eyes tend to look at the bottom of the screen, going up to the rest of the buildings. The an another form of leading lines is it doesn't confuse the viewer. It helps like essentially make everything like unified. Yes. So the third one is composition. Now this is actually very important because composition, it's the placement of objects in a frame to suit the core idea. So for example, uh, this, the, the, the left photo you see now, this was actually taken by a, a DSLR and if you, this one was taken by a real camera compared to the one on, on the left, which was taken by my phone. Now, because of the way the composition and by tinkering with the with the current settings of my phone and, 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 and the camera, you can barely tell the difference. That's why composition is also a very key detail. It can also help differentiate a phone from a camera. So here in the left photo, you can see that uh, the way that the, the 
religious figures are positioned is in a triangle formation. Now, I know I said that in following the, the, the rule of thirds, you should have um, the interest points at the, sorry, the subjects at the interest points. But of course, rules can be broken. And things like this is a perfect example. It, can, it helps provide symmetry, not just by following the, the, the grid. Now, on, on the right one, you can also see that the depth of field on the very back, it's, it has a sort of blur effect. Now, this photo is what you would see as something in a, in, a intro, introductory website. So it, it gets the point across, but it also adds a sense of mystery. It shows the 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 title saying saying La La Vista Panso, which is the location, and it also shows the amenities that it offers, being the ones at the back. But because of the way that this this was composed, you're you're subconsciously more inclined to click next to see to see what else it has to offer. So that's also a very important key of of composition, is to in a way lead the viewer into what you want to to say. Now an, another very important thing of composition is to have proper lighting. Now, lighting- Are these your photos? Still your photos? Mm -hmm. Yes, these are still my photos. Okay. So, so believe it or not, these two photos were actually taken on the same bridge, just shooting different sides. But this also proves the, the, the very important fact of lighting. Now, dramatic lighting, it's like against the sun. And this one is, is uh, the one on the bottom is regular lighting. So lighting can not only illuminate a subject, but it can provide drama. And with the correct tinkering, the, the, right, the right manipulation, you can elicit feelings from the audience, feelings that you can't really put into words. That's the, one of the, the pros of shooting photos. So here you can see that the dramatic lighting gives a sense of old timey, like vintage, cozy type feel, while the, the regular lighting elicits more of a modernist feel. So that's the very importance of lighting. Another thing on, on lighting is if you're going to shoot a vlog or a photo, it's, a, a, or yeah, yeah, a photo in general, do not, like try your best to avoid backlighting unless you, on, on like, unless it's like the correct type of manipulation. Because one thing that we want to avoid is having the background, which is not the subject, be extremely bright while the person who's talking be extremely dark. That's one thing that we really want to avoid. So with applying all of these, this is how like your photo should look. So if so this is the the again the cityscape of of, of Shanghai. So using the river you can see the the leading lines going onto the horizon giving a vast sort of unlimited land and the way that it's composed following the rule of thirds that you can see all of the 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 buildings and aside from from the river you can also see that the the, the way that the buildings are are arranged they sort of give a curve going up to the three main subjects okay so on to on to the main event this is the science behind like films in a way so I'm, I'll just be discussing three things uh, before before a video, during and after. So before, this is a very important key is to always plan a, a like to plan on how a video will turn out. The four main things that I always think about are the subject, the background, the final output and the shots. So for the subject, this will be the main theme or reason as to your video. So let's say you are going to shoot a, a condominium. You have to think of the location, the pricing, you have to think of the amenities and the types of, of, of units and possibly like the pros and cons of, of this, this building. So that's something that you should, like I suggest you list down prior. So while you're shooting, you won't get uh, confused. The next thing to think about is the background. Now, of course we can't change how the background looks like, but we can use the background to help enhance what you are talking about. So if you were to have uh, someone discuss a, a unit, you would have them in, 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 the, in the center while in the background, it shows the view. Now that doesn't, take, uh, that doesn't take the spotlight from the viewer. It helps enhance what, it, it helps enhance and prove what the speaker is talking about. Now the third thing, this is also a very important thing, is to think of the final output. 
Now, if you think of the final output, you can in a way um, direct and uh, and steer how you want your shots and how you want everything to look at. If you think of, of your final output, you won't get confused and, and you'd know how to relay uh, what you want to your audience. So you should always think ahead. So all of these, you should always find a way to steer into your final output. And finally is the shots. Now this, this is also important because you shouldn't just take shots in quantity, but also quality. So you should also take multiple shots in different styles, different angles, take like, take multiple repeated shots of the same location because of course if if you were to hire me into into making your video i can provide you with a a good cohesive like fluid video so that it looks smooth and pleasing to your to your audience so here so now this is during this is when you are already at the location now these are things that you have to to think about you have to think of the shots and the angles so these are the uh, three main um, shots that I, I normally use and normally think of. The first normally is the wide, which I which I is which is normally the stationary shots to show the subject of interest. Wide shots can also help um, show and like to show the the place and helps uh, like place the audience and uh, to help place the audience relative to where the, the video is at. Now the second is the pan or the, the tilt. So pans are horizontal and tilts are vertical. These are sweeping shots to help create a sense of space or fit more into a frame. Now, one thing to note about pan or tilt is to um, is to not have very squiggly or bouncy movements because yes, it will look smooth, but it can also make the viewer look a little bit dizzy. So that's also a very uh, important thing to note. I suggest always having first starting at the, if, if you're gonna do vertical, start at the bottom and then sweep up to the top. I, I will show examples with the, the, the videos in the, in the breakdown. Um, and then the third is the close-ups. So these can be used with dolly shots. So dolly shots are similar to zoom shots. However, dolly shots, dolly shots sorry, show the world around the subject changing. So if so, dolly shots, you are moving in the world. While zoom, it just magnifies things to make it closer. Dolly shots are actually, you actually do these subconsciously, but you're not aware of it. But these provide a more natural feel, which can, which can help, uh, help bring your audience into the world that, that, that you are portraying. Because that's a very important key of, of, of film. You have to bring your audience into the world you're showing. Now, another important thing is the angles. Now, angles are very, very important. Angles can help can help show something professional and something beginner. So you should always try to find the angle where, where the room fits most. I, I find it easy to, to have diagonal effects because if you think of, of, of for example, Pythagorean theorem, the, the triangle and in the, the diagonal point shows most of, of of the the room so that helps fit everything into frame and can help show a sense of scale because um we're very limited to the 2d style of screen so so m manipulating angles and and shots can help bring things to 3d in a 2d frame so now this is where i will show you how all of the things that you've learned well i hope you learned at least um into the video so first, I will show uh, a product showcasing style um, ad. So this, oops, sorry. So this is um, organico. This is actually a mushroom chips ad. So I'll, I'll show you the, the original here. <laughs> Okay, Oops, sorry. So now you're probably wondering, we're a real estate business. Why is there food on my screen? 
but this actually can help show the importance of of um of shooting because if you think of these food as as your types of units so for example if this were to be a village you would you would use all these let's say flavors to show the all the different types of models like this can help direct your viewer to show everything in a short amount of time like as you can see this this film is only 31 seconds so these actually have uh recurring recurring shots that i've i've said prior so here we have a close-up shot and here opening we have a close-up dolly shot so it's this is like a pan going in so if you apply these types of concepts, you can create film that looks like this. Now, here is something that's more up your alley. I'm pretty sure uh, mom has, has shown you this, this, uh, this film before, but for the sake of, of continuity, I will, I will show it again. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm now here at our office in Philflex uh, Coral Way Drive in Moa. So let me give you a tour. where everything goes down this is where i'm really going to go into the 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 nitty gritty details because yes this film is aesthetically decent but it was quite a nightmare to edit so i will show you um all the the things that mom wow. filmed right? nightmare, huh? nightmare well i am being honest but like i said because mom took multiple shots I was still able to to procure this this type of of film so here this is a very good shot this is a wide shot this sets the the, the scene so since like this this shot shows that it's by a road it's near office buildings it shows that it's big and empty right then this this is a, also a very important shot this is the straightforward subject this is Phil Flex Bay Center. Again, also employing that since it was at an angle and the way that the entire sign was, was shot, you can see a leading line that can go from P all the way to Bay Center. That's also very part of angles. It can help show the leading lines to show everything. So it's Phil Flex Bay Center there. So here, this is also another shot. This one is a pan shot. Granted, this is actually pretty fast. I would actually have done it a little bit slower so that in post-editing, you can speed it up. So that's that's something that you could have done different. Now here, this is also another very important shot. This is a tilt shot. Now this goes from the very bottom up to the very top. Now, in, in, shooting, something, in, in shooting something like this, like I said a while ago, it's it's advised to shoot from the very bottom of the base because as you can see the bottom of the building like the entrance of the building is cut now we we don't like we really want to avoid that because aside from from you can't see how the entrance looked like it's gonna have um continuity issues it's very important to have um continuity so that the flow isn't confusing because if like for example if you started outside and the next shot is you're in the kitchen you're gonna wonder how did that happen and then after the kitchen it, you reach back outside it's gonna make the viewer confused and it's gonna let them um it's, it's gonna let them not watch the video anymore so here as you continue it's also very important to show the very top of the screen uh very top of the building rather so as you can see, the building is cut, and you can see that the entire Philflex sign isn't seen. I would have shot it up to the very top so that the entire building is seen. 
one thing that she did do correct though is she she sorry she shot this at an angle not only shooting the front but also the side this can help show the size and scale of the building which is something that we want to show so when we move forward here when she moves back down she also doesn't continue continue down to the very bottom which also it's it's fine but we would really love to go with with um uh con continuity there now here i am this. one i'm the now first issue granted self shots are quite hard to do but one tip is if you notice her eyes now when you're shooting on your phone um of course you're shooting front facing now if you look above where like there's a line and then a small dot. You're supposed to look in that small dot because that's the camera. Now, what's the reason as to shooting, uh, as to looking at the camera? They say that eyes are a window to the soul. So just like looking into the camera, it's like you're speaking to the audience. So if you're speaking to your audience, it's like you're helping them reel in, reel into the environment and that helps keep them stay because you're more inclined to trust someone who looks at you in the eye rather than someone who looks down or at their self. So it's a very subconscious detail, but it's, it helps add more, um, more like trust and more development. Here at our there. office in Phil Flex, uh, car there. Here is also another very important point because she took variety of shots. I was able to overlay this shot, which helps solidify what we are talking about. We are talking about Phil Flex Space Center. I was able to overlay it, and like because of the help of her of her uh, variety and angles, it was able to help reel in the audience more it helps keep the audience informed and keeps them enticed because it's there's always a sweet spot between too slow and too fast and we always want to hit that sweet spot so that we can we can we can reel them in and keep them in in that that sort of um environment car away drive in Moa. so let me give you a tour okay now here this is uh, fine that she she showed her background, but one very important mistake is if you can see half of her face is cut off. Now, um, when your face is cut off, that can that kind of makes the viewer think now now wait where did they go? And it helps it helps um, like if your whole face is seen, it can also help reel them in and think that this is a real life interaction because um one thing that we really want to note in having a a virtual setup is we want to have the feeling of of something normal so having like seeing someone fully it can give you a sense of calm and think okay this is a real person i'm talking to someone real even if you don't notice it it's that sort of slight um slight subconscious uh subconscious like psychology of the brain here now this this is where everything goes downhill so um this is a good shot she showed that she showed the requirements of the building so um one thing that a mom thought ahead of is she wanted to have something on the side so because because she thought of her final product she was able to to shoot this and have space on the side for, for post editing to put all of the details. There. There. And that that pause is also very important. Um one one thing to note, um, something that can help you not be shaky and have a very smooth thing is um when you're filming, try to roll your foot instead of stomping. It can help provide a smooth transition walk and try to have everything on the knees. Yes, it's really gonna hurt, but it will like think of it as extra exercise, you know? So it it's it's gonna pr provide you with exercise and a a very good uh, shot there. And that pause is also very important because it can help, like it gives time for the viewer to read what is on the screen. So pauses are also very important. Now here, 
this. This is a uh, POV shot. So a POV shot is um, a point of view shot. So it's in the eyes of the audience. Um, this one, what she did is she started from the uh, the the uh, security guard tapping tapping in the in the I think uh, gate. So this one, though minute detail, it helps show the viewer what like like the security of the building like what you have to do to get in so even though it's for a split second your brain can already process what is happening this is this, this is one of the things that mom thought about in in the in the before shooting a video now see she pans down and she continues walking this can help show now oh this is the direction you have to go but one thing that i i personally I, I personally would have done different is by this portion, once her camera reaches the gates, is to pan up. Because if you think of the camera as a human, us as humans, we like when we go through something, we first look down to see where where we, we look at. And then once we pass the obstruction, we look up. So this can not only like help show like the background as to where we're going, it can also give a sense of confidence. Because if you're looking down and you're confident, like why are you looking down? Like what are you scared of? So it's it's also a very very minute psychology trick, but by this point she should have panned up. So it because like if if you're very confident with your security, why are you looking down? Right? Like what are you hiding in a way? Here, there. Now this this. It's an okay. It's it's a pretty. It, it's a decent shot because it it gets the point across. It shows that it shows the lines of the of uh, the the social the social distancing. But of course, with the with the space space uh, limitations, one thing I would have done is if you were in the elevator, is to elevate your phone and point it a little bit downwards, and then just like shoot it from above. So that it, oh, sorry, so that it can show the angle down. Or if you're out of the elevator, start from at the door and shoot from from the door, and then look in and out. Because another thing that it can help add is if you're at the door, you can see that oh, you're supposed to go into the the elevator. It adds it adds flow. It makes things smooth. There. Now this now this may seem like a very like. Okay, it's at level it's at level seven. What's like what's the point? Like you could have just said it was at level seven. But like like mom said, pictures speak a thousand words. Just from this like two to three second clip, you can already tell that it's it's at it's at the seventh floor. Now this pan from there to here, that was a very good choice by by mom. It helps add continue it it helps real in the viewer because if you were in the elevator you would look at at your floor and then walk in that's a very good choice by my mom now here walking in to the floor and here now this you may think that oh it's such a sudden shot but there's actually a detail that goes into this if you can see on the very left you can see that there is a wall now it's maybe for a split second but your peripheral vision actually already processes that oh you're you're not supposed to look you're not supposed to go there because there is a wall that's why in the next shot this is why you see the the um the door this shows that oh you're supposed to look for this door and then you turn right to find this door because um I, because you're actually supposed to turn right and then right again but because of our initial shot of this you can see the wall, meaning you're not supposed to turn that way. Now, this was actually one continuous shot, which it actually um, helped uh, helped uh, me uh, develop a very smooth transition. Now, of course, one thing that mom should have done is to keep her camera straight. Uh, one thing to help is if you don't have the grids in your camera, is to use your surroundings for straight lines. So it can help the camera be more um, more straight and not uh, like like askew here now uh, what you're about to see is 
a very difference is is difference in in camera quality now this was not a a editing choice but it was the circumstance of what happened what mom failed to think about was how her office as of time of shooting this one was it was unfinished as you can see you can still see the 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 uh unfinished reception table you can see dust but because it was such a quick shot you your your brain is only able to process um like the front which is the door which helped that's why what you can see here is quite blurry because this, these were taken from two different days. That's also a very important thing to note. If you do not want to have shots like this, these, like unless you're gonna do a before and after shot, it's very important to think that oh, when should you start filming so that you can have you can have a smooth flow and again, con continuity is very important here. Now this the. The one who who took the film had did a very a very good job here because she stood at the entrance and shot in the corner and panned left, uh, sorry and panned right. Now this not only shows the space but can it can also help like make the viewer process everything that's going in. So you like you're more likely to look at something that has small subtle turns than something that's just a really long jagged turn that's why it's it's helpful to shoot at the corner this this also gives an illusion of space because since everything is at, a, at an angle your brain like kind of thinks to process that oh it's a little bit bigger than how you were to see it and because it's at an angle it gives a 3d effect here this was another good shot applying what learned in the in the main office now this the pantry. Now, um, if you can notice this, uh, this um, reflection of of my dear mother is something that we would really love to avoid, because um, we're trying to reel in the audience into something that they are in. So if you see a reflection, those split second, it kind of like it just for a split second takes you away from the world that you're trying to portray. And another thing here, like yes, she shot at the door, but there's actually a uh, a table or a sort of um, a like counter here at the very bottom. But uh, I wasn't, uh, she wasn't able to to shoot this because she failed to look at the bottom. Now this was actually an okay shot, but as you can see, it's cut again at the very bottom. Now, what she should have done is, aside from taking this shot, is to stand at the corner, like let's say to stand here at the space, and shoot inwards going from at the door. So not only do we have this shot, we have another shot. So aside from adding quantity, we also have quality. So here. So moving forward. Here. Now, this one is, again, from a, another, a, a, a different camera. So here, she stood by the door and panned left. And actually, it was a pan left and then pan to right. Now, one thing that we would like to uh, avoid is to have the same type of shots continuously because it's, it bounces. And as you can see, it's a skew. It, it is kind of harder to shoot something straight if it were continuous than to something cut. So what the, 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 the videographer should have done is shot from this corner and then pan to the left and then shot from this corner and then pan to the right. There. Now this, this one was actually like, believe it or not, this was actually not the original raw file. I'm not sure if, if mom sent you the, the, the raw files, but this, she was actually on the very, the, the, the very corner. So I had to crop it and, and make everything fit. Now, that's one thing that we really love to avoid. If you have a detail that you re that, that you said, like spacious parking, if you said that detail and it's, it's um it's just in a vlog and you don't have a separate file it's a, it's a little bit harder to add something continuous as you can see here compared to the different shots sorry 
uh, here compared to the different shots it's more messy it's more like in a way drunk type feel which some which is something that we really want to avoid that's why it's very important to think ahead of what are are the amenities that your building can offer there and then here this is the ending of the film now this one is actually your view of 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 what you see now this one it's this is a perfect example of the background helping to enhance the subject which is keller williams keller williams M manila bay this shows this helps enhance like the view that you guys see this helps um enhance now oh this is something that that we can look forward to it helps it can help improve like morale it can help improve the view of 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 how a building is shown because you're more inclined to look at something pretty than something ugly there so with these two so this video is actually something showing of the utilities and things that a building can offer while while organico shows every shows like the models the buildings and, and the type so if you were to compile these two styles you can end up with something that looks like this. Now, this is um, this is Joey's listings. I will show you. Uh, I I will show you the the whole the whole video, and maybe you can pinpoint and 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 figure out what are the things that uh, that could have been improved. What what happened and like what essentially how like like try to break down the, the video and how like you would shoot it. Hi everyone, I'm here at Levinas Play. I'm visiting uh, Miss Joey sa kanyang open house today, Saturday. Hi guys! Ito finally reaching Miss Joey's place. <laughs> If, if of course, we have Miss Joey in Ito kasi, it has a personal touch. When you do secondary market, there is really a personal touch, personal service. For the month of July, Miss Joey was able to close seven transactions for the month of July, lease. Yan. And how we better learn from the rock stars of Manila Bay. So this is how Ms. Joey does it. She invites brokers, agents, buyers, and she has a team. So I think you should also follow that kind of uh, system. But at least mas malakas, diba? Uh, remember, we work as a team. We become stronger together. So we're now going to city to the unit of uh, Ms. Joey, yung the one na nilist niya for. Ms. Joey, is it for lease for sale? It's for sale. Ayan. 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 Corner and unit. Hi, sir. This is a three-bedroom unit. Three-bedroom unit. 5.2. Okay. 5.2 sorry. 5.150. Okay. Three-bedroom. Ayan. Third floor corner unit. It's great. So with the appliances and furniture. Oh. Yung wag lang daw yung mga boobs. So, see? Look at this. Look in the kitchen. There you go. That's how she does it. Okay, so yun yung figure. 5.1 is below market. If you would look at other units, so it's 5.5, 5.8. I have another unit for sale for 5.8. Corner. The difference is and that it has two balconies. All right. And, uh, no, upper floor. Upper, upper floor. floor. Okay. So this one, walang parking. This is another unit for sale of Miss Joey. Another listings. Miss Joey, is this Miss? Parang mas mas bigger ka, no? Mas bigger. Then okay. there, the client prepared the man water. So. There we got the models, here we got the water. So perfect combination, Deva. This is the facing a minute and 
So, in front of the, as in facing the amenities, so we have the basketball court, we have the pool, we have the pavilion, multi-purpose uh, pavilion. Hi. Introducing, let's welcome Miss Eva Rongales, another rock star from Manila Bay. Hi. Eva. And this is the team of Miss Joey. Now we're proceeding to the third unit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't like my third unit. Oh, this is the complete version of the pair unit that we saw a while ago. Now the presentation of this one is very, very nice. <laughs> See? It already has enclosures. Very well presented. Yeah. So a cabinet, and there's already an aircon, another bedroom. And this is also facing the amenities, guys. This is facing the amenities. Ayan, this is the team of Miss Joey. Okay, one, two, three. Right. <laughs> you were able to improve my shots. <laughs> so okay. why don't you ask so the audience on, on how they would uh want it done or na ubusan ako ng English ya? <laughs> oh, Miss Joey, ang mahal ng bayad ko dyan. Correct, correct. And later we will have a surprise then um sa mga associates at saka sa, sa, sa management. Yan. Okay. Sorry, continue. <laughs> okay, well, um, that that video is essentially, like, I'm not sure if you noticed the mistakes that, that happened, like, all the the things that could have been, that could have been changed. But, of course, um, when it comes to filming, no one is ever, is ever perfect. And it's very important. And there's no, like, set, rules and guidelines so it's very important to take inspiration from others and try to like like incorporate your own like flavor your own style that helps keep like a sense of like individuality so it helps separate you from the rest it, it helps you be the ones to go for essentially so that's essentially the mixed styles of both product showcasing and and utility showcasing you, you can see that it has the the all types of units and it shows all the amenities and stuff that it can offer so that is, is the the final video that i will be showing you so 